Unfortunately, before I did tshuva, I had the best excuse in the world not to do tshuva. Best excuse. That excuse held up solid 15, 20 years. What excuse did I have? I have plenty of rabbis, or people who call themselves rabbis, religious people, come to my office and ask for donations and receive donations and invite me to events and I would attend some of them once in a blue moon. And never once, never once did anyone tell me, hey, by the way, you should do tshuva. Hey, by the way, you know, if you don't do tshuva, you know what kind of punishment you're going to get? Ooh, ooh, what punishment you're going to get? What punishment you're going to get? No, but this. Nobody told me nothing. They didn't say nothing. What they say, what tzaddik, chazaku baruch, what tzaddikai. You know what your tzaddikai is doing? The whole Shabbat, 250, 300 people are going to eat because of your tzaddikai. Wow, what a tzaddik you are. You're like Moshe Rabbeinu of this generation. So me, I'm thinking, Psh, minimum Moshe Rabbeinu. Why are you talking just Moshe Rabbeinu? Somebody tell me to you. Tzaddikai, to tell me mave, to change you from death, right? I'm not going to die even. Moshe Rabbeinu died, I'm not going to die. And I'm not talking about once. I'm talking about week after week. Week after week, these weak rabbis would come to my office and tell me nothing other than staka, charity, all types of things about charity. One time I even asked one of the, uh, two of them actually, two rabbis, two different rabbis, two different times, listen, this Torah thing that you do, teach me some. Sounds interesting. I learned a little bit when I was a little kid. Teach me something. I'm uh, someone that likes learning. First guy came one time, about an hour late. We learned for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, then he had to go. He never came back again. I guess I wasn't that kind of student that he wanted. I don't know why. Second guy would come every single week to collect the car. I told him one time, I want to learn. I want to learn. He's like, oh, no problem. I'll come. You want to learn? Shh. The Mashimo. Wow. Shh. Came. Sat down. We learned for, I don't know, good, solid 10, 12 minutes. Solid 12 minutes. I was kind of sleepy because it wasn't that interesting. But whatever, I was there. After that, he tried, I think, one more time, if I remember correctly. Another 10, 12 minutes. And after that, he continued to come, but just not, no, no, no shears anymore. Just the staka part. Just come collect money. Pay for the mortgage, pay for the lunches, pay for the uh, all Shukhan Shabbat for 200 people to eat on Shabbat, pay for Hanukkah, pay for this, pay for this. I have, you guys think I'm joking, you come to my house, if you want to show you, I have plaques. I have plaques, people, you know, these different places, send me these plaques, like I'm a uh, gvir. I have plaques. Oh, you built a Chabad house. I have a plaque in my house, I'm telling you, I have it. I'm joking, I'm I'll show it to you. A plaque in my house. You send me a picture. You build a Chabad. I donated to build a Chabad house. You built uh, some other house, some other uh, Beknesset. You did this. You did that. Minimum Moshe Rabbeinu. Minimum. But nobody wanted to teach me. And I had the best excuse in the world. What's the excuse? If it's real, if it's necessary, one of them would have told me. If it's real, if it's necessary, somebody had to tell me. But if it's not real, maybe it's just a life preference. Maybe he's just wearing the hat and the beard and he doesn't drive on Shabbat and he eats a certain type of food and a certain type of diet and he's married to a certain type of woman and he has this and he has that. It's just a life preference. Just like the people in Africa, their life preference is to walk around with underwear. And the people in different countries, their life preference is to do voodoo. And other people's life preferences to shoot people. And other people's life preferences to throw rocks. Different people have different life preferences. His life preference is to do this. Fine. Mine isn't. Meaning, if it was necessary, if God really said it and commanded it and obligated it, he must have told me at some point, him or the second guy or the third guy or the fourth guy or the fifth guy or the sixth. One of the ten people that's coming to my office every single week would tell me. Now, you would say, no, maybe they only came once. No, so I'll give you the math. On the average, somewhere between two to three people a week 
two to three rabbis per week will come to my office for approximately 15 years. But let's just do simple math. Let's just do one person once a week for 10 years. It's easier math. It's much more. Whatever number I give you times it by at least three. But let's just say one per week for 10 years. How much is one per week for 10 years? One per week is 52 weeks in the cyclical, in the um, Christian calendar. So that's 52 a year. 10 years, you add a zero to the 5 two, 520. That means you had 520 opportunities to tell me a mechalel Shabbat mot yumat. 520 times you have an opportunity to tell me if I violate Shabbat, not only do I get punished, I have no ulam abba, I'm not considered Jewish according to Allah. If I drink wine, it's if I touch the wine, just touch it, that's a uncooked wine, a regular religious Jew is not allowed to touch it. If I say, Amen, Amen, uh, as part of a minyan to a, uh, the one that doesn't count. If you want to count 10 people to pray for minyan, you can't count me. If you want to witness for a wedding, you want to witness for a wedding, you can't use me. Me, not talking about somebody, me, me. You can't use me for the witness. And so on and so forth. Somebody, 520 times, you'd figure at some point, the strategy is supposed to hit, kick in. You know, like vitamins. They always tell you, take vitamins, take vitamins, take vitamins. Tell the guy, listen, I've been taking a vitamin for six months, nothing happened. He goes, don't worry. Six months is still the beginning. Six years later, I'm taking a vitamin. Oh, don't worry. Six years is just the beginning. When you're 80, it'll kick in. Fine. Maybe it's like vitamins. I figure after 520 times, it should kick in by now. At some point, somebody would tell me, hey, keep Shabbat. Hey, you're intermarried. Hey, you're not keeping kosher really. Hey, th- something. Nothing. I had the best excuse in the world. Best excuse in the world was that Rabotai, no one told me. So God said, God says, they didn't tell you, so I'll tell you. They didn't tell you, so I'll tell you. Hurts a little bit, though. Such is life. 